Okay, so um, let's also um, talk about here um, about one more, one more example, and then you can choose anything. So let's say we have the square root of 4x squared minus 3x, and we're asked to find the derivative. What is the rule that we need to apply now? And you can say two rules, and I agree. One of them, yes. So, say it again. Power rule. There is no power here. Let me give you an example of a power. Chain rule. Yes, and the, and the power rule. Not the pro you said the power? I'm sorry, you said the power or the product? I no, think I said the chain rule. I know, but I think, uh, so, um, Hubert, did you say power or product? I said power. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought for some reason I thought you said um, product. Okay. So yes. So the power rule with the chain rule. I agree. I thought for some reason in my mind I thought you said um, product. So this is product rule. Perfect. So how do I write this? How do I find the derivative of this function? The uh, question. Yes. The, the, the one that you just wrote with the product, does it two functions times each other? Yes. Is that the only reason why? Yes. Okay, thanks. Also combined with the chain rule. Good. So coming back here. Can anyone help with this one? Maybe you can do one half and then parentheses and then do the inside. One half the square root of the function times the inner function prime. Which would be 8x minus 3. That's it. That's all you have to do. There is nothing else to it. Good. Anything else? What else would you like to continue with? So basically, we discussed this. If a function is continuous, it doesn't have to be differentiable. If it is differentiable, it will have to be continuous. Right? What do we continue with, please? Can we do that last equation that you wrote down? Yes. You mean uh, the, this function? Yeah. Yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still looking to see if I'm centered on both cameras. OK, seven. So when we differentiate something like this, if you remember, it's that long procedure because we have to fully simplify it. OK. So product rule. Can anyone help us differentiate the first one? How do we differentiate this? Um, would it be 8x plus... No, that would be... No, never mind. So... You have to add... Oh. oh. You have to multiply the 4 on the outside. To which power? Um, three. Third. Good. Times the inner function prime. 2x. Times the inner function prime. Oh. Um, 6x. Perfect. Times the second function. Plus. It continues. They're not two pluses. This one times. Can anyone differentiate this for us? Two times the inner function. To which power? Two. Yes, to power one. Yes, two minus one is one. Excellent. Great job. Good. Now I have no choice but continue. But I can continue before I rearrange and clean it up. Clean it up. Four times six x 
is 24x. And these two have to stay. No one can change anything in there. Plus 2 times 2, 4. 3x squared plus 1 to the 4th times 2x minus 3. Now, I look at outside. I look at inside. And I see a lot of things in common. When we look at the outside, what is common to 24x and 4? What can I pull out? Four. Just four. Awesome. From these two, what can I pull out? Three x squared plus one. And the power? Um, I'm seeing three. three. The smallest of the two. From these two, what can I pull out? 2x minus 3. To which power? power? Yes, the smallest of the two. And now careful, careful, careful. Okay, so let's see what we have inside. 24x, I pulled out the 4. So what is left inside? 6x. 6x, awesome. From these three, I pulled everything out. From these two, I pulled one out. So how many are left inside? Um, I'm sorry, from which two? From 2x minus 3, I'm here. Oh, oh you only have one left. So one left. 2x minus 3. 2x yeah. minus 3. I reach the plus sign. Plus. 4 is out. 2x minus 3 is out. From these four, I took out three. So what is left? Just one. Yes, just one, which is 3x squared plus one. There is no need to put parentheses. Almost done, but I have to perform these operations and simplify. So then, equals four, 3x squared plus one cubed, 2x minus three. 6x times 2x is 12x squared plus three. 15x squared. 6x times negative 3, negative 18x, and plus 1. This is fully simplified. Do not try, do not attempt anything else. This is it. Did you say negative 18 plus 1? Yes, I said plus, but I didn't write it. Thank you so much. So sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for paying attention. No, I wasn't trying to see if anybody was paying attention. I was just, I had a senior moment. I didn't put the plus. Thank you. Good, back to our list. We know how to read limits from graphs, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If, if anybody says no, we can choose a problem. Um, let's look at the domain, just for quick. So we have different functions, right? All functions are, I mean, shouldn't say all, but many, many situations. Here's an example. So let's say if I have f of x, the square root of x minus 1, and um, x minus 4. I'm asked to find domain. That's all I'm asked to find, nothing else. So what are the p possible problems here? What can go wrong? X cannot equal 4. Yes, X cannot equal 4. What else can go wrong? Can be we can say that only yeah, only one. if you see this, then you can say that. But this is not the same. 
I scan bit one. Okay, so let's discuss the domain of a of a square root. We have it in our notes. We discuss the square root and we discuss the odd indices. What can I have here? What can I have here? What can we have here? What can we have here? Is it x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0? Thank you very much. x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0 because this could be positive or 0 and this could be anything. So every time we see a square root, the quantity under the square root, not x, not 1, not 5, not 10, the quantity under the square root has to be greater equal to zero, except if I have this. I can no longer set it equal to zero, so I have to write just this. So in this situation, I cannot have the equal symbol because the quantity, which is the square root of x minus one, is in the denominator. But here, it's in the numerator. So first I solve this inequality, x greater equal to one, and then x not equal four. How will I find the domain here? Go to the real line, greater than or equal to one. I don't need any measurement units, I mean any units here, but not four. How do I write the domain for this function? Uh, professor, real quick. Uh, when we were, when, at the beginning when we said x can't be negative, I think um, uh, what I'm thinking is it, it can be negative, but it just can't make it equal to zero or something. I'm just confused. So the question is about the square root? Right. So it can't be the square, can't square root of a negative number, right? Correct. So, That's why we have to state that x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Because it cannot be negative. Is that better? Yeah, I'm just overthinking it. That's okay. It's very important to go back to our notes, our class notes. Browse them. It's very important before the test. Okay, so how do I write the domain? Would it be um, open parentheses negative infinity two one one? Um, oh, give me a second. Would it be negative infinity up to four close parentheses and then four to infinity? Do I have anything here? Do you see anything here? Wherever that bracket is, was it one point? Okay. It has to be one. It's a bracket. It's, it's a bracket. That's the one right here. One comma infinity. Oh, one comma four parenthesis union four. Excellent. Great. Great job. Good. Why can it be less than one? It'll make it become negative. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's okay. a different condition. It has nothing to do with the radical. So that's why I said, what can go wrong? Four in here. It's a, it's a tragedy. Because four minus four, that it's makes zero. You can't write zero. That yeah. makes makes the function undefined. So these are two different oh. conditions. One condition is for the denominator. Another condition is for the numerator because it has a radical. They are two separate conditions. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Anything else? Okay. So that was an example with domain. Um, what about equilibrium point? Are we okay with the equilibrium point, given the demand and supply?
Yes? No? No. Can we do a quick review? Yep. So we have to look at the demand and the supply functions. And they are in the review. This is way, way, way before algebra, before calculus. Okay. I need to pick an example, or you can pick an example. Mm. Yes. So we have the demand equals x minus 8 squared for x between 0 and 8, and then x squared plus x plus 13. Again, this is from way before calculus. Uh, the equilibrium point means the demand equals the supply. And you set them equal to each other. Is that good enough, or should I continue? That's good enough, yeah. And then you square, you find, and you, remember the equilibrium point is, an, is a point. From here you find x, and then you plug it in, and it doesn't matter which one, and you find the y value. Okay, cool. Okay. equilibrium point. Uh, use the definition of the derivative to find f prime. This is very important. So can anyone give us a function? So negative 3x squared plus 4x. How do I find the derivative using the definition of the derivative? There is only one definition of the derivative, but it includes what? It has two very important concepts. That f prime of x is equal to the limit of as x approaches 0. Uh, f x I, I know you meant h approaches 0, yes. Um, f plus f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Brilliant. That's it. This is the only definition we have of the derivative. And yes, it's cumbersome. But yes, we have to use it at least once. What do I have and what I don't have? Well, obviously, I have this. It's right here. And this, I cannot do anything to it. Now, which piece I do not have? 